So let's have a look at the assignment one that is due in two weeks, October 15, so 15 days. Um, so here there is a small, well, introduction, what is need finding, you should more or less know nowadays. Uh, this assignment should be done in group. This is the first group assignment, of course. And you can use the lab hours devoted to this assignment to start working on it and complete it in the following days or in the day between the lab hours. Mm -hmm. And there will be something you will probably need to do outside of the lab hours. So the first thing that the assignment is asking you is to select a domain of interest within your topic. Mm? Uh, the assignment has plenty of examples. Like, for instance, uh, if the topic is transportation, you may want to narrow down to daily commuting by trains or multimodality for teenagers. These are both domains within the topic transportation, hmm? valid. So you, in the first case, daily commuting by trains, you are restricting what is going on in, which activity is going on in the topic, daily commuting by trains, not by car, not by bus, just by trains. And the other one is multimodality, bike, bus, etc for teenagers. In that case, you are both restricting the activity, multimodality, and who is interested in that activities, that is teenagers. Mm? And multimodality is meant, for instance, in the city. And so you pick a bike, and then you get a bus, and then you walk a little bit. That's multimodality. Uh, the domain is still something you want to explore, to investigate further, to understand more, not an app idea or a project vision. Mm? It's just like in this example. Then there is the interview to be planned. Mm? And you need to select participant, and we ask you to select at least four people. So all the assignment will have some numbers in them, like four people, two prototypes, three of these. Mm? And this is, of course, you typically don't do interviews with just four people, but since this is a course and it's not um, an interview you need to do for a company of an industry, we scale down mm, the number of people, we scale down things for making it approachable in the semester. So what we ask you is to at least interview four people. Then if you are able to recruit six, it's fine, but at least four. And these four people should belong to different type. So do not just think about immediate user, like multimodality for teenagers, immediate user are teenagers, uh, but also think about other stakeholder, as we said two lectures ago, ago and about different perspective they can provide on the topic. And then there is also an example of a design team of IDEO that was asked to redesign a cart for grocery shopping, physical grocery shopping. And so they spoke with customer of the shopping store, but also involved lead user that in that case are professional shopper and other extreme stakeholder, such as the grocery store manager, that is clearly not one that buy things, but is the other perspective in the store. So it, it has perspective why things work in that moment. Mm? Even if the target was customer, mm? but the others provide useful, can provide useful information. Mm? Um, so we ask you at least four people in which at most maximum one Polytechnico student uh, maximum one domain expert, that is optional since it's maximum, and at least one lead or extreme user. Mm? So four people, one should be a lead or extreme user, like the professional shopper in the IDEO case, and the other three can be or three immediate user or two immediate user and one domain expert, or you can get four immediate user, one lead, user and one domain expert, any combination. Hmm? Minimum four, at least one extreme user, lead user, in that perspective. 
um, if you interview just four people, be sure to include two immediate users. Any variation from that, like I'm doing something for university students and I need to talk with more students, needs to be agreed upon with your, the teacher of your topic. Hmm? That's the people you are interested in. Modality, interview must be done in person with people in their context, so not online. If it's really impossible to conduct the activity in person, for whatever reason, uh, you can do it over chats, but again, after agreeing and explaining why it's impossible to do it in person. Because the context that we said yesterday is actually important for the interviews, especially if you do an observation. And here I say, make an extra effort to observe a few people in action. So one, two people of those four minimum so doing a small observation or a contextual inquiry uh, instead of a, just uh, an interview. Then, prepare some, we are uh, asking you a semi-structured interview. So prepare some predefined questions, the structured part, uh, for the interviews. A reasonable range can be in 10, 20 questions. Um, and of course, they need to be suitable for the domain, the activity you are going to observe when there is an observation, and you also can cover some specific topic or issue you are interested in that are related. Uh, again, try to understand why people are doing what they are doing. Mm. Uh, and here there are some examples. Uh, you can skip some questions or ask any new follow-up question if the opportunity arises. So you plan two questions, maybe in answering the first one, they already give you an answer to the second one implicitly, then you can of course skip the second one. It doesn't make sense to ask again the same question for which you have the answer. Material. You need to record what, how and why interview are saying and doing what they are. Hmm? Take some pictures, you must take pictures of the interviews and you must take picture of any relevant artifacts for the observation for instance or they will say i use this planner i use this document i use this application that could be something you can ask them to show you and make a picture or this mobile app um, audio record the interviews and take notes of the question asked including the one that of course you made up in the moment and the main point in the answer. Uh, if you audio record, of course, then you, you can take less notes and listen to the recording. And then there is this preparation. And then there is actually interviews, uh, at minimum four interviews with the people you planned. You can expect each interview to last between 30 and 60 minutes, more or less. You have to ask consent to do the interview, as we said two lessons ago. And about procedure, two team members uh, must be present at each interview. So if you are a group of four, you can split and do things in parallel, hmm? like in, par in parallel time and interviews. Uh, these two team members, one should lead the interview and the other one should take notes and be sure that pictures and sure that everything is working and the recording is going on, etc. Well, then remember the tips we discussed and we will see today. Then the, here are some suggestions to finding participants. And then the other thing we are asking in the, you in this assignment is to sensitize the results. So, of course, you have raw data from four interviews, half an hour each. Uh, so you need to extract user needs from those. So um, the assignment is asking you to brainstorm as a group once you completed all the interviews, a list of user needs, like 10, 15 user needs, hmm? not three, more than that. So all the user needs that can stem from those interviews. Doesn't matter if they're deep, shallow, interesting, not interesting, it just needs that you observed. And here there is a reminder what are needs uh, that are verbs, not solution, etc. From this brainstorming, that you can do on paper with tool like Miro or whatever tool you want to use it. Um, 
you should narrow down to three or four most insightful and deep needs. So between these 10, 15 needs, just pick three or four that are the most significant and maybe they are repeated among multiple people. Hmm? Um, and when you extract these needs, you should link them to the interview, saying these needs emerge from interview number one and three, or from question number one and two from all the interviews. Hmm? So link them with the source of data. So narrow down these needs um, to three, four, and then for each of these three, four, brainstorm, again, do brainstorming again as a group, at least five solutions to each need. Hmm? So if you had three deep needs, you will have 15 possible solutions overall, five for each need, again, as a team. And then here there's an example what our solution. So if a need is couriers drivers need to use a restroom during delivery without traveling out of their way, the solutions can be shops, gas station, gyms, receive recognition as driver-friendly location for allowing them to use the restroom. Other solution can be driver can see the location of nearby places with parking and restroom and provide this location with business. These are solutions. There is not an app for, but you can imagine from this what you can do hmm, as an app after all. Hmm. So you have these 15, 20 solutions, and then you need to select as a group your single top solution overall. One. From these 15, 20 solutions, you need to pick one solution that reply to one single deep user need. So we started from four interviews, maybe 10 needs, three deep need, 15 solutions, five per need. And then we go down in one solution that solves one deep need. It may happen that the solution solves multiple deep needs, and that could be fine, but try to focus on one solution that, that solves very well one need. And how do you select? Uh, here there are two ways. There is post-it voting, in which each person gets three votes, and mark the three solutions, and then the solution that they get more votes in the group win. Or there is the four category methods. You have to vote and pick up a solution. Hmm? Here there are two methods you can use. At that point, you have your solution linked to one deep user need. And at that moment, you should have, and this is the end, and probably the most, well, easy or quick part, define a project name for the solution. Hmm? That is not the group name. It's just the name of the project, the name of the application, the name of the system, and a value proposition. A value proposition is a short sentence one-liner that convey what people get out of the solution. Mm? So for instance here, Uber had always the ride you want. Uh, Stripe, payment infrastructure for the internet. Just a motto, a short sentence. Slack was one platform for your team and your work. That's a short, very, very short description of your project, of your solution. So project name, value proposition. Uh, in my experience, this is the easy part for you. Typically, you come up with a good project name and value proposition. Um, selecting the solution or generating the solution is instead the most difficult part, in my experience, with your colleagues in the past years. Hmm? The interviews went well. That's easier, in a way. Uh, what you will need to do? This will last two weeks, so you can use the hours in the lab to start defining things. Uh, and if you define everything, you can, let's say, skip the lab of the second week if you don't need to talk with us and do the interviews or do some of this work or go to the class and do some of this work. You have six hours in the room to, to, to use it for uh, as, you, as you prefer, as you need. So deliverables it's likely that the interviews will need to happen in between these two Wednesdays, or at least some of them. Deliverables, what we want to see to give you a feedback. Hmm? Uh, you will have a group repository on GitHub as soon as we finalize the group. And by the deadline, October 15, end of the day, 
you should upload a presentation in PDF structured like this. Hmm? This is exactly what we were asking you in the text. So name of teams, domain of interest, participants, uh, what did you serve, a team member's role for each interview, material you used, results with picture, key quotes that emerge from main interviews, user needs, solutions, project name and value proposition. A set of slides that we are again not going to evaluate, but we are going to look at with you during the, the feedback session. And the feedback session will happen in the third week. Um, and we will do a schedule for each group and we will use the 4.5 hours of the lab to do the, the feedback. Okay? Keeping in mind that if someone cannot be in group, let's say three, because there is a lecture, we will not have this group in. We will give the feedback before the third lab slot hmm? so that everybody can, as a group, listen to the feedback. So we will use these slides as a way to tell you if you did everything properly, if there is something to be fixed, either redoing some other interviews, if you did it very, very wrongly, or by just redoing the brainstorm because the solution are not fine, or the peak solution is not fine, etc. Hmm? So that is the moment of feedback. No, again, no evaluation attached to it. Just a feedback for you to improve. But we listed here some grading criteria, which are the grading criteria we will use to evaluate assignment one at exam time. So they are here so that you know what you will be evaluated for and for which percentage weight. Hmm? So for instance, the domain definition counts for 5% of the points associated to this assignment that is a pretty big assignment. Uh, participants, so the selection, the number of interviews, etc., is 10%. Methodology and execution, appropriateness of the questions, predefined and follow up. So, the bad que did you avoid the bad questions or not? Um, the execution of the interview, did you execute the interview properly or, or bring assumption and bias in, in the context? 40%. All the synthesis, including the project name, value proposition, brainstorming of the solutions, brainstorming of the needs, etc., account for 45% of the score related to this assignment. Um, so here there is a percentage of things and what we are looking for, of course. So appropriateness of the questions. You can know if you did the question well or not and you can imagine how this could impact or not. Adoption of an observation or contextual inquiry. That is something we are going to see. If you didn't do that, you will score a little bit less than a group that did it <coughs> and did it properly, of course. Hmm? So again, this is not for giving a score to you now, but this is for the final at the exam grading of this assignment. But for you to know from day one, which are the things we are looking for and the relative weight of each part. And we will do the same grading criteria for all the assignments so that you at the beginning of the assignment will know mm, what you will be evaluated for. Okay? And then there is additional readings if you want to, if you need more help. Any question on this? Everything is clear? Yes. Okay. 